Be energized position, either fully open or fully closed depending on your valve's configuration. Unscrew the alignment pin so we can align the feedback arm to the positioner. Use the pin to align the hole in the feedback arm with the threaded hole in the positioner. Set the adjustment arm to align with the desired stroke length marked on the feedback arm. This valve has a one and a half inch stroke, so we will align the arm pin with the corresponding mark. Tighten the adjustment arm. Remember to remove the alignment pin. We can now proceed with the calibration of the positioner. Connect the air supply. Check the air supply gauge and adjust the supply regulator until the desired pressure is met. Note that the maximum air supply pressure is 150 psi. Remove the covers. Connect the power supply current source to the terminal box loop terminals. Red goes to positive and black negative. Connect the 475 field communicator to the terminal box loop terminals as well. The beating heart graphic on the 475 handheld lets you know that communication has been established with the positioner. On the 475 startup screen, select heart. Select number two to get to the online menu using either the touch screen or the keypad. Select one for setup and diagnostics. And again for basic setup. Select auto setup. Select setup wizard. The screen will read instrument mode is in service. Select OK for prompts to place out of service and continue. After reading the warning that output will not track input when instrument mode is out of service, select OK. Select out of service so the positioner will not follow the inputs from the plant control system. Select the appropriate unit of pressure. Input the maximum air supply pressure. For the next set of questions, choose the features that best represent your equipment configuration. For this example, we'll select Other for Actuator Manufacturer. This actuator does not have a volume booster or quick release, so we'll select No. Piston Double with Spring. This valve is a sliding stem style valve. It also closes at minimum instrument signal, so we'll choose closes. Sliding stem standard for the feedback connection. Now it will ask if it's okay to move the valve to set the travel sensor motion. Select yes. The valve should start to move. We will select yes to use factory tuning defaults for setup. Select OK to proceed with the relay adjust. Select yes to run the relay adjustment calibration. Select OK and notice the warning. The relay adjust will cause sudden changes in valve position. This is the relay adjustment screen. 
slowly adjust the relay disc until the value reads between 50 and 70 percent. Use a flathead screwdriver to move the relay adjustment disc up or down until the desired value is met. After adjusting, wait several seconds for the positioner to settle. Small adjustments to the disc can make big changes to the value. Replace the cover and select OK. And once more. Select Yes to run the auto calibration. A warning screen will appear. Calibration will cause sudden changes in instrument output. Select Manual for crossover adjustment. The valve will move to seek the high and low drive stops and adjust the output bias. Now we will adjust the crossover. We will select Analog for the crossover adjustment source since we are using an analog current source. Using the analog current source, adjust the signal until the feedback arm is 90 degrees in relation to the actuator yoke leg. Select OK once that is complete. The valve will again move to seek to high and low drive stops. The 475 will prompt you to put the positioner back in service for the output to track the input. Select OK for instrument mode. A warning that the valve may move when in service mode will appear. Since we want to run the performance tuner, select the instrument to be out of service. Now we'll run the performance tuner. Select 5. Warning, performance tuner will move the valve. Here we will select no again since we don't have a volume booster or quick release on this actuator. And no for graphite packing as well. Wait while the device is configured and steady state conditions are checked. Accept the recommended gains. Arrow back to the setup and diagnostics screen to put the instrument back in service. Select Detailed Setup, Mode, Instrument Mode. Instrument Mode. A warning that the valve may move when in service mode will appear. Put the instrument back in service. Arrow back to exit out of all the screens. Select Yes to exit the heart application. Calibration is complete and the valve should function normally with instrument signal.